Welcome to the St. Michael Easter podcast series. My name is Andrew Grosso, and I will be leading our meditation today. Our theme this Easter is community, rediscovering one another. After being physically separated for more than a year, we look forward to the opportunity to reconnect and become even more the kind of community that God intends. May the power of the resurrection strengthen us on this journey. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Today we're going to reflect on a passage from the letter to the Ephesians. This passage comes from the fourth chapter of Ephesians and is about the kind of community that Christians are to share with one another. Here's what the author of Ephesians has to say about the way we are to practice Christian community. Now this I affirm and insist on in the Lord, You must no longer live as the Gentiles live, in the futility of their minds. You were taught to put away your former way of life, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to clothe yourself with a new self, created according to the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So then, putting away all falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. We are members of one another. That is a remarkable thing to say, and the author of Ephesians clearly intends it as more than a pithy aphorism about the spiritual life. What's being described here is a deep truth about our relationships with one another. We are not related to one another through merely incidental or casual associations. Rather, we are deeply and necessarily connected to one another in ways that precede even our awareness of this connection. And what this suggests is that the practice of Christian community is a spiritual discipline. It's something we must often intentionally cultivate because our tendency is to see ourselves as not intrinsically or necessarily related to one another. We more often prefer the illusion of independence and autonomy to the reality of relationship and mutual dependence. But God shows us another way. Through Christ and through the Holy Spirit, we are enabled to recognize the reality of our connection to one another. We realize the depth of our connection when we recognize that it is God who binds us together and not we ourselves. This is what the author of Ephesians has in mind when he writes, Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Our relationships are intended to be opportunities for us to discover the depth of our relationship with God. Our experience of community is a reflection and a sign of our community with God. And when the people of God come together to worship or to pray, when they gather to share fellowship or to grow in their understanding of the life of faith, when they come together to minister to those in need, then God is present in the world and the community of the divine life is manifest. The practice of community is not incidental to what we do as Christians. It is rather at the very heart of who we are called to be. This Sunday, we'll observe the Feast of Pentecost, and during which we'll celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon the Church following the resurrection and ascension of Jesus. One of the clearest signs of the activity of the Spirit is the formation of communities that are transformed by the grace and power of God. Because of the COVID pandemic, we've experienced something of an exile from our experience of community. So as we prepare to come back together, May we be especially mindful of God's gift of relationship, and may we rededicate ourselves to the practice of being a community 
where people can recognize the presence and activity of God. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen.